and we move to the next and final talk for today uh, from Mauricio Gruppi um, and colleagues. That is entitled From Tweeting About News to Creating News Around Tweets, Characterizing Tweets Embedded in News Article. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, just making sure you can hear me. Yep. All right. Uh, let me share the screen. Quick. Um, okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, thanks for the introduction. Uh, my name is Mauricio. I'm a PhD student at the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Um, and I'll be presenting our, our work uh, from tweeting about news to creating news around tweets. So what is this work about? Uh, as you may know, uh, social media, uh, Twitter in particular, has been widely used for reporting news. Uh, so they are used not just, um, even though we, we just talk about it uh, being used for entertainment, it has been used to uh, report news, both in the ways of sharing news articles, as well as allowing journalists to uh, publish um, live events as they unfold. So in this case, uh, we have information that flows from the news to Twitter. So news articles and news events uh, flow into Twitter and, and propagates there. Um, but another role Twitter plays in this, um, in this scenario is that of sourcing news and opinion. Uh, what this means is Twitter is no longer just used to propagate news, but it's used to source and to support news articles and news stories. Uh, for example, journalists can use tweets by individuals and organizations to support claims or even to drive a certain topic of discussion. So this is typically done in news articles uh, by what we call embedding tweets or embedded tweets, where the content of the tweet is fully uh, replicated in the article, usually by some API or some uh, embedded code in the, in the news article on the website. And in this case, we have information flowing from Twitter to the news articles. Um, so it's like the opposite direction of the previous relationship. Um, so in this study, we will be focusing on the use of Twitter for sourcing news. So we're, we'll focus on the second scenario. Uh, we provide a data set with news articles as well as embedded tweets. And we aim at, at characterizing the use of these embedded tweets by different groups of sources, namely sources that are treated and seen as reliable, mostly mainstream sources but also unreliable sources, uh, which are often conspiracy and pseudoscience websites. And we address several questions uh, to do that characterization with respect to the volume of Twitter-based content in these articles, as well as different patterns in the mention of these tweets, the users they cite, if there are any outstanding users from Twitter that are most cited, and we also do some qualitative analysis of what, uh, how these tweets are used in the production of news. So to that end, uh, we employ our large scale news data set we call NILA uh, from 2018, 2019, and 2020. These data sets, they contain news articles from hundreds of sources and these news articles potentially uh, have one or more embedded tweets. In addition to these articles, we also have the source level credibility labels, which we assign to a source based on media bias fact check credibility ratings. And in the past, we've used also other, other ratings to do that labeling. In total, we have over 3 million uh, news articles and hundreds of thousands of them contain at least one embedded tweet. So to answer the question of whether the, the, the amount of tweet Twitter-based content has increased in recent years, we started by analyzing the ratio between the number of tweets and the number of articles contained in our data set. 
So just to, to clarify, our data set contains uh, articles from a few hundreds of sources, mostly reporting in English and on US uh, related news, although some, some sources are not US based, uh, but those are mainly uh, US news sites. And we can see there is a growth in the number of articles and in the number of embedded tweets, but this is not exactly uh, explaining a trend here just yet. This may have happened just because our collection has uh, increased over, over the years. And when you look at the ratio of embedded tweets to articles, it, it has maintained a more or less constant uh, ratio of roughly 22%. So this means roughly 22% of the articles contain at least one embedded tweet. As for the difference between uh, these mentions by reliable and unreliable sources, we have noticed a significant difference between how many articles from reliable sources contain or mention a tweet versus unreliable sources. So on average, 25% of articles published by unreliable sources mention one or more tweets uh, against 8% of reliable. So you're more likely to see an unreliable source mentioning a tweet and using it in its discussion than a reliable one. Also, with respect to the cred credibility of the users that these sources mention, um, we have seen differences in, in the trends they, they cite. So for example, um, unreliable sources tend to cite users that are not verified versus reliable that cites more often verified, though that's not necessarily a signal that a user, uh, just because a user is verified doesn't mean they will be uh, trustworthy but uh, we are looking at the distributions to see whether there are differences with these aspects and, and they actually, uh, they are. Um, another interesting finding is that reliable sources out of, the, out of the user accounts they cited, we found that slightly over 500 accounts were banned by Twitter at some point after they were mentioned or after uh, they posted their tweets versus uh, over 5,000 accounts from unreliable sources, which means unreliable sources uh, tend to mention tweets by people that will later on uh, be uh, banned from Twitter for some reason. We, we haven't specified the reasons why they were banned, some, perhaps some violation. Uh, we also looked at the number of followers, even though that's also not a strong uh, signal of trustworthiness of the user, but Unreliable sources tend to cite and to mention tweets by users with not a uh, not large amount or fewer than 100 followers, which again doesn't mean uh, directly that a user is trustworthy or not, but we are dealing with these multiple signals that may indicate credibility of the user. So in order to generate a qualitative analysis, we also looked at a few examples of tweets that have, have been highly cited in this data set. Uh, specifically, we looked at a tweet by the World Health Organization from January 2020. Um, this tweet has been mentioned 116 times in different articles, so sources throughout the, the the spectrum, reliable and unreliable, have cited, have, have mentioned this um, tweet for different purposes. And what we see here is the, the surging of different narratives around the same tweet. So this, what, what this tweet is saying is that um, Chinese authorities have found no clear evidence of human-to-human -human transmission of the novel coronavirus. And this was published back in January 2020. And uh, after this, and after scientists discovered everything about the, the coronavirus and COVID-19, there has been uh, many unreliable sources using tweets like these to create uh, false narratives 
and to imply conspiracy theories. For example, we can look at a headline by Breitbart uh, that says uh, in, a, in an article that states and that affirms that uh, the World Health Organization is related to the Chinese government and is trying to cover up for something that uh, China did with the coronavirus. So different narratives uh, arise like these. We also look at another case study um, with a similar, a similar idea, but a uh, different purpose. In this case, is a misinformation piece published by a Chinese government official. And here we see both reliable and unreliable headlines um, and sources trying to debunk this piece of misinformation. And even though they are trying to do the same thing, they are doing it through different frames and constructing different narratives. So to finalize, um, we observed a growth in the amount of Twitter-based content in recent years, as well as in amount of articles. And we've seen that Twitter is not only used for quickly reporting stories anymore, but also for sourcing them. We've shown qualitative and quantitative differences between the mention of tweets in reliable and unreliable sources, uh, such as, for example, um, unreliable sources mentioning tweets by less accredited accounts and banned accounts. Finally, uh, we provide a data set. This data set is available. Uh, it's, it's open, you can download, you can get the articles and the embedded tweets. And in the future work, we intend to include the contents of these tweets in the analysis as well. As you may have noticed, we haven't included the content of the tweet itself. And we also want to use it as a feature for news veracity detection. So if, you've, if you followed um, Ben's presentation previously, you see that there's uh, a network that we can build to characterize sources. And we are looking at ways this type of behavior can be modeled into a way to represent sources as well, depending on how they mention tweets. So this concludes my presentation. Uh, feel free to ask any questions now or later. You can uh, always reach out to me or to my co-authors by email. Thank you very much.